I can't even remember a time as a youngster uh, that I didn't want to fly. That <clears throat> from the get go, and uh, <clears throat> my parents kind of constantly told me about the fact that reminded me of the fact that I was a black man and I couldn't. Uh, there's things I couldn't do. So I remember when I was in cadet school, when they they'd have this fear. All the guys would have this fear about uh, not graduating, and that sort of thing. And I try. I was pepping them up really, but what I was telling them was that, uh, hey, you you know that. Uh, if you say you're not going to make it, or you think you're, you're probably not going to make it. On the AT6, you had a, a rear view mirror, and you could see that mirror, look in that mirror and see who was behind you, see the, the, your student behind you. And he looked up at that mirror and he said, you know, he says, I don't think you'll ever learn to fly. You're too dumb, you're too ignorant, you're too black, you're too everything. The first time he got me in the plane, I heard this, the N-word. He just kept, well, I'm not going to say N-word, he said nigger. And he, and he, he kept that up and, and when I finished training that one day, I went back to the barracks and I remember laying on the cot and I took the pallet pillow and I stuck it between my teeth and pulled the blanket up over my head and cried. I soaked that bed and I said, I can't possibly continue this. There's no way I can continue this. And But yet and still, that was my dream. My dream was flying. I wanted to fly worse than I wanted life itself, really. And so as a result, <clears throat> I. After all that cajoling the first day, I woke up the next morning and the sun was shining through the windows and the birds were chirping and I said, you know what, I, said, I think I'll let them nigger me one more day. <laughs> and that's how I got through. I had to read out this whole thing on segregation is they just did things that didn't make sense. It was at the detriment of the, of the country to, you know, to do that, to imply, impose that, but it happened. He survived. He says, uh, was there, you got anybody to pin those wings on you? Boy. <laughs> <laughs> and I says, uh, uh, no, I was waiting for my girlfriend. I said, I guess she'll do that. He says, well, could I pin them on for you? <laughs> and I really? said, yeah. I said, go ahead. I said, go ahead and pin them on. And he took them, he pinned them on me. And when he got through, he put his arms around me, he hugged me, and he kind of, I could feel him quivering like he's crying. And he says, you know, he says, I'm too old to go over there. But he says, you're a damn good pilot, and I'm sending you. I think the wars today don't make sense to me too much. They seem to be driven by other things and the, uh, shall we say, the security and welfare of the country. It seems as though we're getting into uh, wars for other, other than defending ourselves. It's uh, especially this one. It's not, uh, I don't think it, uh, it was a good idea to start with, but no war is. I have to, have to uh, use the words of Franklin Roosevelt, because I hate war. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I, I do. I, I think it's the most useless thing that a man can do, uh, can perpetrate upon another man. And uh, I, I've never seen war result in anything good. We were all uh, supportive of each other in our ground school and whatnot to try to get everybody uh, on the same page. So uh, it was a great experience, something that you don't very often get a chance to do. We've got to carry that legacy on and expand it beyond what we are, as you say, to younger generations that will carry on what we did on a greater level. Uh, right now, a Tuskegee Airmen, of course, is about, I would say, is probably the hottest group in the country. I'm honored, and I'm, and I'm happy, and I'm proud. I, more than anything else, I'm proud to be a Tuskegee Airman.